Armand's the Magnificent, the guy that all of you guys, or a good majority of you guys have been waiting for. I apologize that this took so long. I wanted to spend some time with my wife and my brothers. And this past weekend we played uh, Phasmophobia and we played Helldivers 2. I made some content for my other channel. If you guys are interested in, in games that aren't raid, I have another channel linked down below. I asked you guys in my community post, by the way, thank you guys for voting because this helps me know what you guys want to see and what kind of direction I'll be heading towards when it comes to content, putting out content. 217 of you guys voted, thank you. Most of you guys preferred to see a guide first on Jack Sparrow and Armand's The Magnificent. I'll be coming out with a St. Patty guide later on. Let's go ahead and take a look at him. And before we really get uh, dig into this, before I show you guys my builds, my everything, I, I need you guys to understand something. One, I am not the best when it comes to creating anything like compositions or, or teams or building characters. I, you know, I have a general idea from experience from about five years of experience of playing the game. And I've got a good idea from watching um, people way smarter than I uh, do their content. So I'm literally just like you guys. I just happen to be behind a camera. Okay, so keep that in mind. Keep it also in mind if you're watching this and you haven't seen me before. I am an end game pay to win player. I also do content for raid, but I get paid for it. So just keep that in mind. Keep that in context. Let's start with his skills. A1 is weird blade attacks one enemy has a books up to 55% chance of increasing the cooldown of a random active skill by two turns. Fills this champion's turn meter by 10% for each turn added to the cooldown. A2, AoE, steals all the turn meter, all the turn meter, guys, all of it, of each target, except enemies under sheep debuff. Also places a stun debuff on one, or for one turn on all enemies not under sheep buff. So, okay. no matter what's going on, when he hits this A2, and it's on a booked three turn cooldown so to my understanding and again i don't know everything so I'll, you'll often hear me say to my understanding and i could be wrong and if i'm wrong always correct me in the comments because it one teaches me and two makes sure that i don't put out misinformation as long as you have the accuracy for this nobody's getting a turn this guy is going to be controlling turn meter and making sure that the enemy isn't going to be taking turns no matter what and that's insane right there on a three turn cooldown and then is A3, and we're going to talk a little bit about this. For my next trick, three turn cooldown, books up to 100%, places sheep debuff on an enemy for one turn. The wording here in raid is usually a little bit kind of weird. And, and, and when I say the wording is a little bit different, or the wording is weird when it comes to raid, is, is um, like they, they have things in here in raid when you're reading someone's skills. For an example, can't be blocked can't be resisted um places stuff like this makes a big difference and what i mean by that is places a sheep debuff on an enemy for one turn does not mean that he's actually um attacking somebody so he's not having a direct hit on somebody like if um what, who's a good example i can't think of any examples off the, off the top of my head but uh oh i guess uh, sun wukong actually right so sun wukong with his uh, A2 does a sheep sheep debuff, Staff of Wonder. As long as you have enough accuracy, his sheep can't be blocked. And it's the same thing here. But the difference is him placing means he's not hitting. And, and why is that important to, to talk about? Why is that why am I pointing this out? It's because when you take Sun Wukong and you go up against somebody who is uh, at a stronger affinity, if you try to hit him with um, the A2 and it weak hits, in, in my recollection, and I could be wrong again, so maybe verify this. You might not be able to sheep someone if you're trying to sheep somebody if they hit weak. But because this places, and it doesn't have a direct hit, that means that you're not going to be able to weak hit when you're trying to sheep debuff somebody. And I guess when we're going through... Uh, the testing and everything, we'll we'll figure this out together. We'll see it together. Keep in mind, guys, I haven't tested him out myself. I did build him. I may, maybe did like one or two arena runs with him, but I didn't really uh, dive into his entire, like the wholesome of his kit and everything. I haven't really used him. I'm not experienced in Armand's yet. Debuff cannot be blocked. 
Now, it says it can't be blocked, but it can be resisted. When it says can't be blocked, that means that even if you have stone skin or even if you have immunity on a champion, Armands can still sheep that champion through their stone skin or their immunity. So this will not be stopped if you're wearing stone skin or immunity. Um, so if I were to take Armands into arena and I wanted to sheep a UDK or a Mortu Macabre in stone skin, I'm still going to be able to do that through my stone or through his stone skin. If one, I win the 50-50 with stone skin, meaning um, yeah, stone skin mechanics is there's there's a check for for uh, for stone skin. Basically, you have a flat no matter what 50-50 chance to have an effect work on somebody with stone skin or not. So he one has a 50-50 chance to place sheep. And then the second check is the accuracy versus resistance check. So if Armand has more than enough accuracy to beat UDK's resistance, for an example, and those two checks pass, then I'm going to be able to place sheep through that stone skin. And sorry, I have to explain all that. If you already know this, bear with me or just, you know, there's time codes down below, but there's a lot of people who don't know this. So I'm trying to provide all the information that I can and um, then he's got a 100% chance of moving all buffs from all enemies, a complete buff strip, and then fills this champion's turn meter by 5% for each buff removed. And that's a pretty sick skill to have. So he's going to be removing everybody's buffs. And I, like, is removing a key word here that I need to look at? Like, let me look at, let me look at Madam Ceres for an example. Cause she does on her, what is it, A3? removes all buffs okay yeah so this is one thing that i, I gotta point out so madam saris used to be like goaded for arena and then sheep <laughs> started speaking of sheep um sheep came into the game and anytime you tried to place a uh, debuff or pl place an effect on somebody you had a high chance of getting you know depending on the blessing and, and, and whatnot you still need accuracy for sheep but uh, anytime Ceres would try to use this, she would get sheep, effectively like changing the meta. And that's, it's not just Madam Ceres. But with this in mind, if you try to remove all buffs and somebody has like a six star blessing for Polymorph, I think that means Armand's actually has a good chance of being sheeped. And the, the only way to counter that probably would be to build him in resistance. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Whenever sheep debuff is removed or expired on an enemy, increase the cooldown of a random active skill on that enemy to its max. That is brutal. That is disgusting. That's disrespectful. I don't know how this guy made it into the game. Jack Sparrow, how'd you get in here? Builds this champion's turn meter by 10% for each turn added to the cooldown. So if you're going up against somebody like Kaimar, and you sheep him, and he comes back from his sheep, his A3, for an example, which is like at six or seven turns, it's pretty high up there, his, his A3, uh, where he resets everybody's skills. He's going to get a boost to turn meter by 10% for every turn. If there are multiple champions on the team with this skill, only one will activate. Or let's look at somebody who is a little more, more common with a more realistic uh, cooldown. Who do I see often? Oh, Taurus. Taurus has... Uh, three turn cooldown, that's 30% if you were to sheep Taurus. Um, four turn cooldown, that's a 40% turn meter boost for Armands. After he, um, with his passive I mean. And then his aura is a pretty high 28% to arena battle speed. He's already going at 108. And he's got 30 given res and 20 given accuracy. Uh, but at the time of this recording, I've done all events, including Summon Rush. I maxed out Summon Rush, if you've seen that video. <laughs> I accidentally overshot. I've done all the events, all the tournaments. I'm at 1050 out of 1500. Fire Knight is about to drop. I'm 450 away from getting the five star soul. So if you're wondering if you're keeping on track with that, that's that's my take on it. I'm gonna go over the build, my gear, some thoughts and considerations, so on and so forth. I have him in, and I wouldn't pay too much attention to my my build on him this is one instance where i had to choose stats over sets and I'll, when i talk about his stats in a bit you'll see why why i made this decision he's in kind of like a broken set here he's not really rocking any one specific thing except for divine speed right but he does have um you know these one pieces right here 
protection which gives him extra res so that's nice as well as um this slayer piece with extra crit rate but that doesn't really matter with him i'm not going to build him as a damage dealer he's going to be a support champion so when you're building him uh, ideally what i wanted to do first was to build him in stone skin i i wanted to build him in two two turns of stone skin but with my current gear and again a lot of it is not leveled up yet i'm waiting for the next like cvc or something something big where's all my stone skin hold up right here i have a lot of unrolled pieces so that could have played a factor into what was available versus what wasn't available on top of that because when you're using when you're using the optimizer the hell hades optimizer you um you have to have it at, at at least 12 otherwise the optimizer has a very hard time finding um accurate pieces to put onto your champions so that is a thing but the next cvc or the next um re-gear free re-gear event i might i might go ahead and, and do that pieces of gear that i currently have on him i know uh there's quite a few of you guys who have come to me and said hey like i really like it when you show me pieces of gear i respect that i like that in fact that was something that me as a viewer as a consumer of content before used to want to see that as well and i'd kind of be like okay well can i see like what kind of gear you've got what kind of gear you're rocking keep in mind we're focusing specifically mostly prioritizing speed accuracy and i tried to go for some resistance and that's pretty much all i cared about but the number one priority was speed i want to ascend these i want to glyph everything up in fact let me just go ahead and, and glyph this up right now since i'm i'm here i'm a little bit ambivalent about using my six my i guess i'm okay using the five star glyph pieces but i'm ambivalent about using the six star and above because i am working towards marius and i don't know what they're going to ask of me they've been asking me to ascend and like right before the missions came out i dumped a lot of um a lot of um what do you call it glyph glyphs on the high level level glyphs and so now i'm kind of like all right well now that i am aware of what's going to be needed and what they're expecting for the marius missions i'm a little bit more ambivalent about using my resources i'm kind of in the saving mode when it comes to uh, certain expendable things like glyphs. I guess five star is okay because we are, what the one? We've already, at least give me five, geez. We've already done the five star glyphs for the missions to get Ramatu. So it's mostly the six star and above that I'm worried about. So focusing on speed, I do want to see what I get for Ascension. Every little bit helps, sort of. I'm not going to be mad about little a little extra HP. Plus, I, I always farm Sand Devil, so I'm not too worried about spending the, the lower levels. Uh, he's not a damage dealer. I think, you know, a, a defense might be better, but I'm not going to... A defense or HP would have been nicer, but I'm not going to, like, redo anything here. And I do want to redo this to try to get something else, but not exactly sure. Maybe defense or HP percent. Do any of you guys have any suggestions? Nothing wrong with the little extra attack, I, I guess. And let's go ahead and just one, two, three, four, five. Let's go rock this. Give me a ten. Give me a tenner. Come on, extra accuracy. Why not? We'll just leave it there. Accuracy chest piece. And I guess there's nothing wrong with defense. Let's see if I can get anything else here. And so we'll leave that. And then speed on speed. But again, I'm waiting for the Marius missions because I, I I haven't seen it, but I believe that they're gonna ask us to do something like bring this all the way up. So that's why I'm not um, messing with it too much extra attack why not and let's get some extra defense in this ring is also uh, something to take note of because of his a1 i did want him to have counter attack master or not master we'll talk about the masteries also but i wanted him to counter attack as much as possible because he has a 55 percent chance of increasing cooldown of a random active skill which could really mess things up for the other person if their skills are on cooldown that's why i have him in this revenge ring and you get these from doing clan versus clan i think if i remember correctly and i wanted to throw more counterattack stuff on him but with the way that the optimizer um spouted out everything it, this is what came out so here we got a quad roll on accuracy and that's really nice let's go ahead and put whatever extra stats we can put on is that a four we can do we can do this one give us a 10. we'll take a nine we'll take a nine guys a little extra hp there and let's ascend it Again, looking for HP. Yeah. Here, if I could redo this and choose, I would probably choose resistance or accuracy. I wouldn't be mad about either of those. But those are the pieces of gear, and we're gonna go over to the total stats that I have. 
Now, he is getting quite a bit from Blessings, but this is where he's at right now. He's at 51,000 HP, 45k attack, um, or 4,500 attack. I wasn't really focusing on attack, but I guess it just kind of happened that way. We're getting a lot of attack from Blessings. Quite a bit from defense as well. I would have preferred to have more defense than attack, so he's sitting a little under 3,000. He's going at 309 speed. Again, this is the priority, going fast. A lot of you guys might not be able to reach these speeds. That's totally fine. If you were a newer mid-game or uh, you just don't have my kind of gear, which is understandable because I've been playing for five years and I'm a pay-to-win player, if you don't have this kind of gear to be able to do 300, and let's be honest, 300 really isn't that a lot for where I am in the game, but I wasn't going to break Yumiko or Cardiel or Ar Arbiter or anybody else just to make him faster. Although he might be worth it, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how, how much I use him. Because I'm a little slow when it comes to the free champions. But for an example, like um, UDK, when he first came out, I wasn't too hot about him. Uh, Rathalos, same thing. Ronda, I only just recently started using Ronda on a more consistent basis. So we'll, we'll see if things change around. So priority, priority is speed, resistance, and accuracy. I cared more about having accuracy than I did resistance, but that might bite me in the butt. Again, I wish I had the gear to put him in stone skin or immunity, but I just don't have the gear for that right now. And I'm not going to break anybody. So when you're building your Armands, if you're not at my level, or if you're at a higher level, you actually, if you're at a higher level than me, you probably wouldn't even be sitting here. You'd probably be like, you know, those are chump numbers. Um, but if you're, if you're not here yet, you want to focus on speed. You want to focus on resistance and accuracy. But in specific order... I would prioritize one speed, two accuracy, and then three resistance. I believe he's going to be going fast enough to where he's not going to be worried about having debuffs uh, placed on him. Live Arena will be a different story, but Classic Arena is a little bit different in the sense that you can kind of choose, pick and choose. It's a different ball game. I, I intend to use him in Classic Arena, specifically more so in Tag Team Arena, but we'll see. I believe that if you even try to bring him into Live Arena, Live Arena, he's going to get banned for the most part. So. Uh, what is a good speed? It kind of depends on where you are, and every account is different. That's why I don't like to give a set number. My wife's account, she has Armands, and I think the fastest she can go with, and she just got back into raid, is something like 230, 240, 250 maybe. That's where she's at, If she, but she has to break other people's gear. Like, she has to make Elva slower, and um, yeah, so just keep that in mind. Oh, another potential gear set that you could put Armands in is Relentless. I think that would be a fun build. Uh, if I could get him in, in Relentless, he'd be he'd just be taking turn after turn after turn because you have an 18% chance to get an extra turn, proccing extra turns when he also already has pseudo extra turns, especially with this A2 and so much turn meter control. So if you're a newer player, obviously like as fast as you can make him, with as much accuracy as you can give him and then resistance and then after that after that you're going to want to focus on like hp and defense so uh, if you're looking for a specific number i can't really give you a specific number without going into your account you kind of just have to pay attention to your own account is what i'm trying to get at what are the reviews saying most people are saying he's he's pretty poggers uh, except for these bottom dungeons which makes sense here are the masteries uh don't blindly copy masteries guys but you can go ahead and blindly copy these masteries i'm going to go a little bit in depth here and talk about why i chose each of these masteries i don't normally do that i kind of just skim over it but because i think uh, a lot of people are going to have this champion and a lot of newer players are going to have this i think it might be nice to give that perspective by the way guys i did not look at anybody else's builds i did not look at any other videos on armands this is all I don't want, I don't like saying it's all me, it's all me, but this is all me. Accuracy. You're going for accuracy on the support tree, as much accuracy as you can get. Here we're taking charge focus, so when he has no skills on cooldown, usually when he starts out, he's going to have an extra 20. We're taking extra accuracy again for every enemy alive, up to 16, so an extra 16 points. We're taking, oh, let me go over here, Arcane Celerity. So he places a few debuffs, quite a few debuffs, and every time... Um, a debuff is removed, like on, on all enemies, it, it's removed or it, it expires, he has a 30% chance of increasing the turn meter by 10%. A as you guys have seen in his kit, he's got a lot of turn meter control, and that's why I chose this. 
uh, spe specifically this because this one right here rapid response has to do with his chance or the chances of his turn meter increasing whenever a buff is removed or expired but he doesn't really place any buffs i think right yeah i don't see any buffs that's why i went with the debuff arcane celerity turn meter booster then we have the cycle of magic which gives a five percent chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random skill by one the start of every turn so if he can cycle through his moves faster more so faster uh, more so than he already is then he's able to access his active skills sooner and that's pretty nice whenever it does proc sniper honestly the reason i chose sniper was one because these two really didn't make any sense for me like i i don't intend to have him alive versus other people and that's why i didn't take spirit haste and then Master Hexer, you can't extend sheep, I think. And you can't extend stuns for sure. I just chose Sniper as kind of like a middle middle ground. I, I think that this will affect his A1. And somebody please let me know if this is true or not true. But his A1 has a 55% chance of increasing the cooldown of a random skill on the enemy. If I add Sniper, does that go up to 60%? Because part of me thinks that it does. Or what about his sheep ability his a3 has a 100 percent. well it's already at 100 percent. so I don't, I don't know what i'm even talking about never mind um so yeah somebody please let me know if that's a thing can i increase the chance to 60 percent on his a1 versus just 55 with sniper and then eagle eye for an extra 50 points of accuracy when you're taking our mons into places like high arena or live arena and by high arena i mean like plat so me, I, I place plat pretty consistently whenever I, I want. There hasn't been, for a long time, I haven't um, not placed plat when I felt like it or when I've been awake for it. I don't do it too often, do it too often because I'm just not that into it, but but I am a plat level player. Um, my record, my personal best is like 186, I think. And that's just, that's kind of to give you context of where I'm coming from and what my mindset is. When I talk about accuracy for high level arena this is not a lot this is not this is not a high amount of accuracy i think to consistently do well in plat arena or even live arena you want about 700 as an end game plat level player or even like live gold i think i'm in gold one maybe but if you're like gold three and four you probably need like 700 accuracy 700 has been my go to yumiko for an example 729 is what i went for who's another one i use pretty often where's ramon to seven hundred again for ramon to uh but so you guys get the point i try to aim for about 700 accuracy and 300 plus speed for champions that i'm going to be using in a high level arena live arena is the same thing but honestly he's gonna get banned so much when it comes to live arena I, i'm pretty sure i did take him try to take him i should say into live arena a few times and he did get banned he actually got banned over my yumiko at some point so that was pretty pretty interesting did i tell you guys my wife saw him armand's the magnificent and she was like oh let me go play raid again if you haven't seen that video that was it's pretty funny okay so we talked about the gear i told you guys about different uh gear sets if you can get gear sets on him i talked about stats uh we talked about his skills we talked about his masteries so let's go ahead and oh one more thing blessing i feel like this adds to the problem because everybody has something mostly negative to say about sheep i think what polarium did when they introduced armands and it's not like they thought about this lightly because they know what they're doing right a lot of people were complaining about polymorph but especially when Polarium can make a lot of money off of this. They will not directly change a champion, but eventually they do try to change the meta up and it always works out in their favor for the longevity of the game because things are always changing. Like for an example, uh, Raid right now is not the same Raid it was five years ago when I started back in 2019. It's a very different game, completely different game to be honest with you. And so they brought him in they brought armands in to kind of i get to kind of i guess just like create extra balance or create some sort of balance but now everybody's running around with sheep i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing i don't know how they would 
you know, nerf sheep or how they would get rid of it. They're not going to get rid of it. They, they purposely redid their blessings, everybody's blessings, and made them stronger to incentivize people to buy um, the soul stones. What do you call it? These, um, what do you call it? Is, do they have some in the shop right now? Let me see here. Ignore the high prices. Ignore the high, these right here. The soul stones to incentivize people to to buy these they they pumped it up maybe they didn't think their numbers were good and they uh decided to to do that but anyway whatever the case is it's here now you kind of just gotta gotta roll with it and find ways to deal with it but the the other side of this in polarium's eyes is probably look everybody has not everybody but a good majority of people have armands already so sheep is a little bit more accessible to everybody and you know, I ask my is he wearing live this is these are live arena tokens. Right? These are live arena tokens. Did you notice that? These are live arena tokens. He's obviously meant to be Yeah, those are live arena tokens. Yeah, so I guess they're just like wearing it on his sleeve, basically. Like, hey, this is an arena champion. This is you this is your guys as this Polarium saying, this is your solution, guys, to sheep in arena. And um, yeah, so now everybody has it. So Polarium's like, all right, well, now it's everywhere. Everybody has an opportunity to participate. You all have access to the same thing, essentially, if you guys went for the fusion. To be honest with you, and I asked my wife, this wasn't a hard fusion. I don't know if it's because like I'm pay to win or I've been playing and I just I have resources for the most part, but it wasn't a hard fusion, I don't think. I've asked other people in my community if they thought uh, Armand's was a difficult fusion. A lot of them say, no, they, they didn't. But let me know if you guys think I'm wrong. For blessings. I went with Polymorph. Let me read it. Has a chance of placing sheep debuff on an enemy for two turns whenever they place debuffs on this champion. So, okay. So placing is a key word here. Remember, he places sheep on an enemy. So I think if he were to try to do this on somebody with like a six star blessing or like a high level blessing for sheep and they have high accuracy, higher than my resistance, then I could potentially get sheep myself because i'm trying to place a sheep debuff on this champion or when an enemy removes or steals a buff from them so basically whenever you're doing pretty much anything uh to anybody who has polymorph on them you have a pretty good chance of it's a 15 percent chance when he has the five star blessing of placing sheep still requires accuracy can be resisted so i went with sheep just to be able to sheep more because when it does work in your favor let's be honest it works in your favor if you're going for the soul and i do think it's worth it because when you go for souls it's essentially like a pseudo empowerment like plus one or plus two in your champion you you're getting a lot of stats from doing this like like let's let's look at armand's and see how much he's getting 8500 for hp 70 750 for attack 600 for defense 38 percent for crit damage I mean, like, look at Rotos for an example. He's at 306 right now for blessings, but when I finally, and I've been saving up for quite some time, I've been saving up for quite some time, maybe I'll even get lucky, he's going to get a crit damage boost of 38, so he's going to be a lot closer to 350 crit damage. Or let's look at Razzlevarg, who has Brimstone. He's getting all of this extra stuff, 38% crit damage, and this is after, post-buff, post by the way. They buffed these uh, blessings extra resistance and accuracy. So this is mainly what I'm looking at right here. The extra resistance and accuracy for Armands. When I get the fi the five stars, I'm going to have another 75% or not 75%. I'm going to have an extra 75 res and an extra 75 accuracy to tack on to my Armands. So this will be closer to, yeah, it'll be closer to like six, 600 something, 610-ish. And this will be a little bit over 300. So this will be a little bit closer to where I would like him to be when it comes to having the correct stats that I that I want. And maybe even when that happens, I'll be able to rework him. I'll let you guys know if I do. Okay, so before we go ahead and take him into arena, let's go try him out in some of the dungeons. Let's try uh, Spider. I think Spider would be a pretty fun dungeon. Can I even do hard? Can you steal turn meter? Oh, immune to heal reduction, decreased speed, HP burns, as well as turn meter reduction effects. So he wouldn't be able to do that against the hard dungeon, I think. Yeah, we'll take her out and we'll put. We'll just go in with this team and see what happens. Because I'm pretty sure you can't take turn meter right there. It's, but can you take turn meter from the spiders or at least stun them? Let's see. You can take turn meter and stun. That's interesting. Can you sheep? Oh, I'm going to sheep that spider. Yeah, put a sheep in there next on the on the spider side. 
Can he, can the spider consume the sheep too? Will that count? And let's place decrease defense and weaken. Or the sheep will probably die before he can even get to it. But I'm pretty sure that would be a fun, fun thing to try out as well. Like trying to make a team go with our mons. Like stopping the spiders from doing anything. That would be pretty cool. Can you increase the cooldown? You can decrease turn meter, but that's about it. Okay. Yeah, what really takes up so much time are, are the spiders just dropping down. Okay, so yeah, he's pretty good there. What about on normal spider? Hold on, I want, I want to check to see if decreased turn meter effects happen here. Immune to heal reduction, receives less damage. Immune to cooldown effects, HP exchange effects, balancing. All turn meter reduction effects are decreased by 50%. When used against bosses. Okay, so that there that answers the question. From 21 to 25, turn meter uh, effects are reduced. So I can't steal all turn meter from the boss, but I can steal up to 50. But I'm pretty sure 50%. But I'm pretty sure from 20 and below the old school dungeons, this will actually um, work. My turn meter stuff will work, right? Because I remember using Cold Heart to push back turn meter all the way down, fully deplete. So let's take. Can we take the turn meter right here? We can, we can do that. And everybody's been stunned. Let's go ahead and place that one on sheep. Can you place this big spider? Imagine that. If you could place Tainted, um, whatever her name is. Scarvog? What's her name? Sca Scavig? And there's Nut. Boom, hitting for 1.4, 1.7 mil right there. And then let's go ahead and clear that out. Cool. And is that six star banner stage 20 was not expecting that dragon definitely try him out in dragon i'm pretty sure let's just go to stage 20 um and we'll go in with the same team well let's just throw in some extra random champions we'll bring uh you bring in the rabbit our mons and we'll just take in taurus for the heck of it Okay, so let's go ahead and... Yeah, uh... Pa pa I should probably change this. And this is probably why uh, our mods is not stronger. Because I put faster gear on Podrig. Because I'm going to do a, a god on him next. Decrease the turn meter. Can we steal everybody's turn meter? Of course we can. Why am I asking? We already know. 3% is right there. Let's put you into sheep mode. And I should have done the A3, but that's okay. Just go ahead and move on to the next stage. Boost to speed and turn meter with Podrig. Let's put your skills on cooldown. And let's go ahead and take rid of or get rid of Tyrell. Put the stun on him with Taurus's A2. And we're going to. Oh, we get an extra turn proc from Podrig. And let's go ahead and do that with Sun Wukong. All right, let's see. Can we take his turn meter? Can you take the dragon's turn meter? You can't. Okay, so he's one of those uh, bosses that won't let you do that. It would be so funny, though, if you could take one of the dungeon bosses and you could just sheep them. And then you got, like, a giant sheep. They, you know what? It would be so funny, honestly, if Polarium came up with a boss that was just sheep. Like a sheep, a sheep dungeon where all you do is just fight sheep. And what if they made that like the hardest content ever in raid? That would be funny. That would be messed up. Like a like a secret cow level for Diablo. But they just put that in, in raid, you know what I mean? For sheep. Yeah, so same deal deal here with our mons. Basically, you're able to help clear through the waves a lot sooner. So if you're struggling there, then yeah. But I really think he stands out in spider. Being able to stun all those spiders is huge. Being able to take turn meter, especially on stage 20 and below, even to 21 to 25 is pretty huge. Because you can, you can definitely do, do, do something with that and, and make teams. Ice Golem probably, but at least with Ice Golem, you can sheep the minions. So you can't have um, them place heal reduction or decrease defense. And a lot of times, that's what kills you. 
Faction Wars, obviously, he's going to help you out. Don't think we need... It's not even open, so I couldn't go in with that. Doom Tower is another thing. So if you're struggling in Doom Tower, you could definitely put them in your team. So you can control the waves. Because sometimes you come up against waves, especially at the higher levels. Where, I mean, I can't show you guys right now, but there, I think 114 is one that, that stands out. There's, there's some waves in there where it's just like all Mortus or like a bunch of Valkyries or like a bunch of Siffies and Rotoses. Rotoses? And uh, if you had Armands to stun them or even Sheep, like a Siffy or a Sheep or a Rotos or Sheep Mortu, that would be huge for you. Cursed City, whenever you can apply him, you'll be able to. I think I'm stonewalled around here. It's always this this area. Trying to get into Soul Cross is, is always an issue for me. Clan Boss, I don't think I would use him because Turn Meter, Stun, and Sheep have no effect here against the Hydra or the Demon Lord. But let's go ahead and try... Oh, Livery is not open. Um, at the time of this recording, unfortunately, I can't take you into Live Arena, but trust me, I'm pretty sure that he would just get banned. Because I've tried him a few times in Live Arena off camera, and he just kept getting banned. But you could definitely put him in his Tag Team Arena team, uh, in your Tag Team Arena team. But let's go ahead and look for some classic Arena teams here and see what we can come up with. Here is one team. Uh, the way I think about it is you would basically be using him to control your enemies and you'd want to put him in like a fast team. So let's let's see if we can what will happen after practicing with him. Okay, here's one question I do have. Let's say we let's get rid of um Sun Wukong here. Let's say I try to attack or place sheep on like Duchess. Do I place the sheep on Duchess or does it get redirected to UDK? Actually, hold on, let me think about that. I think the initial target actually will still receive the effect that you want to happen because I remember on uh, one of my old personal alt accounts, the last one that I gave away, which was another late game account, um, level 100 and everything, I had Marshall Ed. I had Marshall Ed and on his A3, with his A3, he's able to steal buffs. And so there were many times where I would like, for example, if I tried to focus on Duchess, I'd use Mashaled's A3 and it would steal all the buffs from Duchess, but the actual hit would hit on UDK instead. So I'm assuming like right now I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to place Sippy on Sheep. I don't think it's going to get redirected, but let's see if my memory serves correct. And it does. It does serve correctly. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty cool. So you can't use UDK. RIP to UDK. You're not going to be able to um, to cheese that way. And let's go ahead and get rid of uh, everybody here. Speed boost, turn meter boost. Let's stun everybody. Steel turn meter. Okay, that's another reason what, what I why I was talking about placing versus attacking. Probably two reasons, right? One, I weak hit against somebody who has who has a stronger affinity than I do. I don't know if he has more resistance. He might have more resistance. We'll look for another uh, force affinity champion to try him out against. But I believe that when you weak hit, the chances of you um, having any type of effect that you're trying to place are reduced. I think it's like a 15% diminishment rate or something like that. I think. Let's go ahead and boost our own turn meter and hit UDK. We get our extra turn. Use ally attack. Yeah, Podrick is such a goaded champion as well. And goodbye. Oh, we sheeped him. Wait, which, which so can you? What happens if you try to sheep a sheep? Nothing. Imagine if you like turn into like a super sheep, like a super buff sheep. Bah. Or it would suck if he got sheep twice. Like the 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 turn count for sheep went up. 26,000 is actually not that bad. Okay, so Stone Skin, Pythion. Let's go first. And we're going to... Let's start out with our E2. We'll see if... And it's kind of a little bit hard because he's got Stone Skin, but we'll, we'll see what happens if I can turn Meter Steel or stun through the Stone Skin. So I did not pass through the Stone Skin here, but let's see if this will pass through the Stone Skin 50-50. We win the 50-50. And let's get rid of 
you boost turn meter we're going to we don't want to kill anybody yet and that was an accident oops what about rector drath what, what level is this this champion or this player is level 98 is there a level 100 anywhere Let's see here. Here's another Pytheon. He's level 96, though. Taurus will definitely hit you up. Hund Hund or Hund Hund. German for dog, no? So let's go with this. Actually, let's take him out. We'll put him in the lead and we'll put Tormin in. We'll take Sun Wukong out. Let's bring Rodos in. Now I'm going to see if after I take off the stone skin from UDK, I'll see if I'm able to uses a2 and if weak hitting has an effect this is this is something i just need to know okay so we're gonna steal everybody's turn meter right so it went through the stone skin here i think oh no i'm not don't don't listen don't listen to me okay so we're gonna do that and let's get rid of leo and we're gonna get rid of you and let's bring you back so that we can have a discussion with you here and let's hit the provoke all right uh okay so not quite yet armands doesn't have his i don't even know if udk is a good champion to go up against because usually people build him with high resistance so i need to find a different champion that doesn't necessarily have a lot of resistance or isn't innately usually built with a lot of resistance let's see if this a2 if if i can have something happen Got resisted, so he, he just has high, what do you call it, resistance. Force Affinity, Kandrafon. Kandrafon actually might be a good good choice to try out against. Let's bring in someone else in the lead here. Let's bring in Romantu. Where's Romantu? Because we're going to get a accuracy increase. And let's go ahead and take Sembo Kong with us as well. Okay, so let's see if we can steal turn meter from somebody who is at a who has got a stronger affinity. We did steal the turn meter. Can we sheep Necrit? We won the 50-50. Let's take away their passives. Let's get rid of Lydia. Because she can be pretty annoying with her fears and counterattacks. Let's go ahead and remove debuffs. Got resisted. Wait, aren't you my high accuracy, Sun Wukong? Hit that. Decrease turn meter, but we did not win the... Oh, boy. Okay. Candy doing candy things over here. Let's get rid of you. He's got the um, Cycle of Revenge Mastery, I think. Who else? Let's see. Um, we try again against Wither the Crown. Yeah, same team. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, so let's steal. Try to steal with. Wait, she has. She normally has high resistance too, no? Yeah, we weak hit there. We did place the stun on Mithrala. She Pythion. Yeah, so anybody in Stone Skin is pretty much kind of SOL now. Oh, I forgot she does that. Try to get rid of, um, what's her face? Elva. Whoops, I forgot we're not in the, we're not using the right Sun Wukong for that. This Mithrala doesn't have enough uh, resistance. It's interesting. So you saw that when she came back from being sheeped. It's any sheep, right? Because her cooldown just got messed up. Can we steal turn meter? We did steal turn meter. So I guess when going up against a negative affinity, weak hits do matter. I think weak hits matter. And um, yeah, let's just go ahead and try to finish this off. We'll leave it on auto here. Increased cooldown, there you go. Stealing turn meter again. Did not hit weak, so I'm pretty sure Weak hitting has an effect on whether or not your the skills that you're trying to do um, 
have an effect. I hate going up against people who are lower level than I am, because one, it's like if I lose, then that says pretty negative things about me as a player. But then if I win, it's kind of like, all right, dude, you, you beat somebody who's like level 82. Big whoop. You know what I mean? Let's just hope we get the freezes off, I guess. We did get a freeze off. So Tormin, and then let's steal everybody's turn meter. We did steal turn meter except for against Brogni. Let us sheep. Who should we sheep? Well, I want to sheep Yumiko. But can't. Let's just put Arbiter skills on cooldown then. She resisted it. I definitely need more um, accuracy then if I'm getting resisted so much. Put this on Brogni. Skills on cooldown. Resisted both times. Okay. Let's push back turn meter. Well, there goes that. Boost our own turn meter. And let's take this off of Taurus. Maybe even get a stun in? No? Let's take everybody's turn meter again. There you go. And we'll sheep... We'll sheep Yuma go. This time around. Let's try to get rid of Arbiter now. Yeah, so trying to find the right team to fit Armands in, I think is going to take a little bit of uh, time for me. But if I ever do come up with like a, a really nice team, I'll let you guys know. But as as far as I know, I'm just going as fast as I, as I can. And if you guys have any team combinations, as always, please let me know. So we're stealing turn meter from everybody except for the sheep. Taurus can't take a move. Let's go ahead and sheep Taurus. Put it on you. Take turn meter again. Wow, so Yuma going Armand is actually pretty freaking sick. Because you're taking a lot of turn meter, you're putting things on cooldown. That's a nasty team. Nasty combination. I think I might try to do something with that. Alright, let's stop sheeping people. Except for Taurus, I might want to keep you sheeped for now until we get rid of Yumiko. Let's get rid of you. And now Taurus can come back. There you go. Let's go ahead and just do this. I probably shouldn't let him use his uh, greatest hits move, though, his A3. Probably just A1 then. And there we go. Okay. Can't wait to uh, roll up those stone skin pieces and get his five star blessing. And maybe when this shows up, I'll end up getting that as well.